Ninja Killer is unreal. Oh, like, yeah. Watching well, the man on YouTube and watching the man work Ninja live Killer, is something different. But Ninja Killer and that Rio matchup, that Johnny Cage versus Jackie. Yes. That that was intense. Like Oh, also, we got Poke Chop oh. coming up in the next pool after this one. <laughs> it's going to be great. Just to name a couple posts we got in the building for the MK side. Man, there's a lot. There's a lot of the NRS boys here. I mean, so Katana's looks like they're here. doing a little button check toss. Honeybee's here. Know. Anyway, I thought this was a button check. I think it's a button check. Yeah, yeah it's a button check. <laughs> I was going to say, wait a minute. Did we get confused? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you, you always got to check just to be sure because some people, uh, you know, some people just go straight into it. Round one, fight. No good folks, Sonic Fox is not here. All right, so Tiki is playing right, Sub-Zero. He's using that Avalanche variation versus this uh, Frost Arctic. And that's the one with the uh, the ice clone, the pseudo ice clone setup. Oh yeah, definitely. So ice versus ice. Oh, that was a good reaction. Now see, the interesting thing about Frost uh, Air Attack is that if she hits you, while she's in the air, then it's a high. But if she touches the ground first, before it hits you, then it's a low. Okay. That's an interesting thing to know. Yeah. One of my training partners, uh, he he played Frost for a good while, and he uh, he showed me that because he used to he used to hit me with that every time, and I would just wonder like, why like, why am I not hitting work? him? He's exactly. like he's like, oh, I forgot to tell you, man. It's a it's a low when it hits the ground. I'm like, so you want to wait five games deep to tell me that? <laughs> he tried to go for the forward too, but it didn't work. Both of Whoop. these guys playing a little bit more patient. Can I? Can we just appreciate the fact that nice. position she got frozen in? <laughs> right. Can we appreciate the fact that this is like a great lore match? Like, if only if only it took play, place in the Link Play Assembly. This oh, would yeah. be great. That would have been a perfect setup. Pressure there blow there from Frost. Yep. Nice grab by Sub Zero. Put it into that ice ceiling. <laughs> they tried to go for the forward four. Oh, yeah. Nice projectile. Now Ragnarok is deciding to zone him a little bit. Ooh. The watch grab your toes. and the grab into that ice wall. Basically stopping him right there. Both of these guys exercising their ducking from these uh, zoning tactics. Oh, wow. I would have thought the forward two would have caught him off of that. I thought it was about to catch, too. Final round. Fight. All right. Frost. Oh. That slide. That's one thing that some zero players are starting to use a lot of or have since the game started, really, is that slide into that ice wall. See, the interesting thing is, is that when you play the Avalanche version, at least the people that I have played that play this version, I notice that they like to play a little bit patient. But at the same time, like, they can't they can get aggressive when they want to, especially if they know they got you on the rope. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, and crush and blow off the slide. Tries again and gets hit. See how she hit the ground first? Yeah. That was a low. That's what you were talking about with mm -hmm. that low. As soon as she touches the ground and levels out. These guys going back to their zoning matchups here. Oh, they tried to make the trade. So they're oh, going to yeah. win that trade, though, anytime. And he's going right into that fatal blow. Something else fatal blow is just so good. Oh, yeah. Like, it's very simplistic compared to other fatal blows, but I, I just love, I just love how it's just. It's enjoyable, though, because of his character. Mm. It really fits Sub-Zero because it's like, you know, it's not really flashy. Or anything like that. It's just straight discipline to the point. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we got a little tips going on before they start the next round. A little bit of coaching. Guess he wants to take a minute and just slow down some. Oh, yeah. All right, so we're going back into it. Just taking a little bit of time to think about where he can improve on. So Diki is up one game. 
Ragnarok is looking to take this one. I've noticed that Diki tends to, uh, he want, he like he likes his space. Because he does a lot, he's been doing a lot of backdash and trying to make sure that he can get out the ice balls, try to catch the slide whenever she whips something. Now they switch positions. That was a good. Right. Nice wake up. wake up there by the sub zero. Nice counter. Ragnarok is making sure to try to keep him, try to keep Deke in that corner. Oh yeah, definitely. Well, wake up. See, there's that low. And see, the crazy thing about it is that it's it's so hard to read that thing if she's real close, just because like it could hit you beforehand she or it could hit you at the bottom. She has a lot of range in general. She has quite a bit of range. Yes, she does. All right, freeze. Make sure to keep it unbreakable. Oh, until he put him in the air. <laughs> See, just the amount of range she has on her strings, like. Oh yeah. That's also understanding that matchup there, knowing where your distance is. Oh, With there's the crushing blow. blow. Yes. Trying to keep, trying to keep him away. Oh yeah, it's Doing a smart that thing chip to do. Damage. Also, why is that? It? It's a smart thing to do though, because I mean, he's already up one round. He's got, he's got a little bit of a life lead, but he knows he's got the range to deal with Sub Zero too. Oh, so, yeah. it's exactly how I would try to play. Taking it. in that chip damage again there. Frosted. Oh, he tried it, Whoa. and we ducked it. There's a tech from the grab. Oh. Man, you hate to see it. Nice. <laughs> That was nice. Cross connecting with that fatal blow. Yes. Finish him. Frost wins. That makes it one one. Frost taking in. Ducks the ice ball. There she goes with that low again. Hit you know, the ground. He, he has been pretty consistent with that air attack. Oh, yeah. If it's connecting, why not keep using it when you find the opening? Exactly. More zoning. Oh. There's that keep way distance. Yeah, he, there. Try, he tried it for the 4-4. Four four. Oh, yeah. Frost is trying to keep that distance there. I mean, and he should. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Oh. That way, as soon as he finds that opening, he can come in and start dominating. I think Rag has started as, like, adjusted to uh, what sub is trying to do or what oh, yeah, he's trying to do in certain certain distances. Frost with the grab there. Because he's not, he's not trying. Oh. oh. Alright, like he hesitated That's there for a second about what he wanted ball. to do. Yeah, there was a hesitation. Alright, now Rag's probably gonna keep distance. Oh yeah. We've been seeing a lot of distance between this matchup, these two anyway. Mm -hmm. Sub zero, now you have time to get that out. Oh, Ooh, misjudged that distance on the early. slide. And Rags gonna take that one. And see, the crazy thing is, is that like both of them are playing, both of them are playing like really good. It's just that I think that Rag adjusted to that distance needed because. I mean, mainly that's what he's been doing is he's been keeping his distance yeah, from him, making sure that, agree. you know, Riot making sure that what, whatever Sub-Zero throws, he can't get to him. Yes.
And so they're, stick they're sticking with both characters the whole way. Yep. Gotta love Can't it. Stage change, though. All right, Rag is up two games. DC on one. And he changes the thin ice variation. Here we going with Rag keeping that distance again. Whoop. And you also, Sub Zero changed over to thin ice in the variation on this one, too. Mm. Probably felt it was a better choice. Maybe that's the sign of him being able to adjust a little bit more to what Rag was doing. Mm. That was a nice nice stuff there. Her yeah, but her might have the last spin. second. <laughs> that's one of those moves where if you miss time it, you're gonna get hit by it. Yeah. You can keep blocking, but if you let go of that block, it's over. Not to mention the amount of like shift that she does when you when she amplifies and you're sitting there having to hold that. Oh yeah. And Rag has been really consistent with that air move by her. Has Whoa. been. That's right up under it. <laughs> See, now D now D's starting to get a feel for himself now. Right. He's, he, he's starting to get a feel for it now. The slide that Sub Zero does is a nice adjustment for when Frost is throwing out her zoning tactic. Yeah, because either way it goes, if she decides to trade with him on Ice Ball, I mean, he's going to win every single time. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Every time. Ooh. All right, now Deke is in Fatal Blow territory. Right. Rag is opting to stay away from him. I think I've missed input on that jump kick. Increasing that distance that they have. Ooh. Ooh. And there and it is. And Rag is just continuing to capitalize on that all. Yeah, he took it. 3-1. There we go. And Rag gets to move on.